Good morning and welcome to our Sabbath School lesson. I know we missed a week last week and that may happen from time to time. We hope to not let that happen very often, but uh, it did. We're sorry we weren't with you last week. Thank you for joining us this week. I'm here with David Harbour and Pastor Isaac. We're both from the Joshua Seventh-day Adventist Church and we're glad you're with us this morning, no matter when you choose to watch it. So we're on lesson six of the Sabbath school lesson and before we get started we're gonna jump right in to Saturday's lesson but before we get started uh, David would you mind having prayer for us? Sure thing. Sure Thanks. Thing. Dear Heavenly Father we thank you for this day and this opportunity for us to be in your word Lord to study and uh, help commit your words and your love to our hearts Lord please um, come into our minds our thoughts our hearts and and be with us, Lord. Help us be open and receptive. Help us read the right, right words. Help uh, Pastor Isaac and I say the right words Amen. so that um, you know we can reach the people that, and that they can uh, know what we're, what we're trying to say and um, can come closer to you, Lord. We thank you so much for all that you provided. It's in your precious name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, I realize I may have glossed over the title of what we're studying here real quick. And... Uh, if you look down in the in the description section, you'll see some links to some free materials of exactly what we're studying. It's the Sabbath School lesson, um, adult Bible study lesson. So, our Sabbath School quarterly. My apologies, Bible. Uh, yeah, I mangled that too much. <laughs> anyway, go to the description and check it out. You can see uh, there are apps that are available, both on the uh, Apple Store and the Google Play Store, as well as a downloadable PDF. That makes it very easy just it's a it's all all free as well so check that out in the description if you're wondering what exactly are you guys study that's where it's at all right so saturday afternoon's lesson it's uh the title there is called finding rest in family ties and i thought that's almost an oxymoron sometimes yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah in, in a lot of families it is in a right? lot of families uh if if I hesitate to use the word normal, and David, you may see where I'm coming from. It's, uh, right. I, I don't really believe anymore that there is a such thing as normal. Right. Uh, but, you know, normal means very different things to, to different people. Um, but I would say if there was any such thing as normal, I think um, it's normal to, to assume that pretty much every family out there has its own quirks and uh, maybe even dysfunction. Yeah, oh yeah, Con okay. conflict and- Sure, and, conflict and-, and, and yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably more normal than not. Um, okay, all right. Um, I, I think when most people think of the normal, right, they think of the like the sitcom normal or the-, or the uh, Maybe like the, well, and the sitcom normal, I think back when we were growing up was the nuclear family. Right. But it's not really that anymore, right. is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, okay. that's, that's, right. that's not at all, so. Okay. Well, uh, let me go ahead and read the memory text, and this is coming from the New King James Version, if you'd like to look that up, or if you've got your study lesson there in front of you. It says, You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware, lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away from the error of the wicked, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory, both now and forever. Amen. Now, you may not be familiar with the New King James Version, and sometimes the way it reads is a little stilted, I guess, yeah. a little bit. So I'd like to go ahead and read that same thing from the New Living Translation. And it's verse, uh, verse 17. I am warning you ahead of time, dear friends, so that you can watch out and not be carried away by the errors of these wicked people. I don't want you to lose your own secure footing but grow in the special favor and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be all the glory and honor, both now and forever. Amen. Uh, all right. So that, that makes a little more sense there, I suppose. Um, now this is, one of my, this is one of my favorite stories. As a kid growing up, it was because of the, uh, the, the, the coat of many colors. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and then later on it was for, uh, it's still, you know, for very many different reasons. So I'd like to go ahead and read this and perhaps you might know where we're going already. If you know the story, if you don't, it's a fantastic story that we're going to get into. Um, it starts out like this. The young man carefully scanned the horizon. Then finally he saw them. He'd been looking for his brothers for days as he approached, waving and calling to the grim faced group. He got anything but a warm welcome. 
His own brothers actually wanted to kill him. If it hadn't been for Reuben, there may have been no story to tell. Reuben convinced the rest just to rough him up a bit and throw him into a dry well. Later, Judah came up with a grand scheme to get rid of him and make a little bit of money too by selling him to some passing slave traders. Now, I don't think we really don't have to go through the rest of it, but my goodness, that's an example of dysfunction. Dysfunction at its highest. <laughs> at its uh, highest. You know, in, 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 in there, they talk about, it, it's clear examples of every type of dysfunction. Yep. Greed, yep. which actually saved him, right? So sure. um, you're talking about Judah's greed actually mm -hmm. is actually what saved Joseph. Yeah, but Why just uh, flat out kill him when we could make some money? Too? Right, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, Reuben showed a little bit of grace, a little bit of... Uh, but but even so, he still he still <laughs> instead of instead of saving his brother, he said, oh, let's just let's just beat him up a little bit and throw right, him in a well. Like right, we didn't right. kill him if he just dies down there, right? Yeah. And so, <laughs> so, so, so sort of grace. So so a little sort bit of, of grace. So um, yeah, dysfunction at its highest level, I think, mm -hmm. is uh, is is a clear insight. Jealousy, um, rage, um, you know, yeah. all all of those things you can see that the, a lot of sibling rivalry, if you will. So absolutely. Um, and, and now you might be wondering, you know, did this take place right at home? It didn't. They were gone. It said he'd been searching for his brothers for days, but it started in the home. And as we get into Sundays, it, it, that's the title, actually, Dysfunction at Home. Now, you know, we're talking about Joseph by, by this point. Um, David, I wonder if, if you would read that first paragraph that kind of gives us a, a kind of a clip, like an overview. Sure. All right. So Joseph knew about dysfunctional families. Hmm. It had started with his great grandparents, Abraham and Sarah. When Sarah realized that she was barren, she had convinced Abraham to go uh, in to her servant Hagar. As soon as Hagar was pregnant, the rivalry began. Yeah. Growing up in this atmosphere, Ishmael and Isaac took the tension into their own families. Isaac made a point of favoring Esau and J Jacob spent his life trying to earn his father's love and respect. Later on, Jacob was tricked into marrying two sisters who did not get along and competed with each other through a childbearing race, even enlisting their maids to bear Jacob's children. Wow. So it didn't just start with Joseph's family. Mm -hmm. This goes way back, generations. I mean, this, this right. Is, right, yeah, not his immediate generation. Right, right, right not his immediate. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, it didn't just start because his brothers were mean or mm -hmm. something like that, yeah. And so, uh, you know, that seems like... Um, there's a, there's a passage in the Bible, I didn't look it up, and it talks about uh, God visiting the sins of the fathers to the children to the third and fourth generation. Mm -hmm. And growing up, I used to think, that's so unfair. Why punish the children for something? But that's not what it's saying, huh? Right. It's, the, the children will, we learn from our parents. Um, and my children are gonna learn from me. Yep. And so when I do things that are dysfunctional, I'm teaching my children, how to do those very same things. They may choose not to learn that, and that's a tough cycle to break. We can, but uh, yeah, that's where the sins get, the, the, the consequences of those sins get visited to the third and fourth generation. Right, and, 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 and if I, I can't, I can't name the verse, but I remember, I remember, I, I remember, either. I remember you talking about. It. I think mm -hmm. it speaks more to the ripple effect, right? It's, okay. It's it's God talking about the ripple effect of the sins of the father are going mm -hmm. to affect generationally, yep. not so much that they will be that God will punish those generations, no, but more that the ripple not. effect, yep. and, and it's exactly what you're talking about about yeah. breaking those cycles, and mm -hmm. it, it's it's um, it's a very very tough place to um, to get out of. Right. It is. It is. So. And, and it's all form of, of the cycles that you're talking about, the, the dysfunctional cycles. It can be minor things from how we, the words we use to speak to people to abuse even. Mm -hmm. uh, and so breaking those is, is super important. Um, but you know, let's see, I don't know if, uh, oh, it must be, it must be Mondays that it really goes into it. Um, it talks about, it, as, as we go further in this, um, it talks about this rivalry between the two mothers, and of course it spills over into the children. Uh, the rivalry between the mothers obviously spilled over to the children who grew up ready to pick a fight. As young adults, Joseph's older brothers already had massacred, this is incredible, massacred all the males in the town of Shechem. Now, of course, they did that because uh, their daughter had been violated. Uh, well, yep. well, their sister had been violated. Their sister. Yeah, and they uh, they went in and just uh, slaughtered everyone, all, all the males. Yeah, it yeah. was... It was um... You know, reading through that story, uh, um, 
It was it was very plotted. It was very planned. And oh, it was absolutely. Very, and it was very. It wasn't a, a crime of passion. Right. Yes. Yeah. And uh-huh. and so yeah, this was this was obviously again the, that that cycle of of. Com- I hate to say competitiveness because again, hmm. uh, this is this is uh, this is in case they're defending the honor of their sister, but sure. Um, but rather than just say no, now they they've added a level of deceit and they've added a level mm-hmm. of. Um, I don't want to say torture either, but it's it's they they force them to do definitely th- a level of brutal a br- a brutality yeah, brutality that's yeah, it. Absolutely. yeah absolutely well they could have just gone after um, perhaps the young man who committed the deed mm-hmm. instead of every single male in that entire town right but that gives us a picture into uh, kind of the mindset of these of these young men mm-hmm. we're dealing with some I mean I don't know stone cold killers yeah. almost we're dealing know? with some I mean, bad dudes some definitely bad guys. Yeah. some bad dudes um, but still it's family yeah right right so so Joseph knows all this. But they're still his brothers, and you know maybe it's similar to our faith. As I said, every family has its own form of dysfunction, right? You right. Fully agreed. Uh, we all have the things that we, the quirks and all, all manner of things. But it's still family, and you know we love family. Mm-hmm. We can't help it. You know we're related to them, I guess. Right. Um, so, and I, I want I want uh, each of you to, to recognize something as you're as you're listening to us, as you go through this story with us that we can't choose our family of course you know unless uh unless we choose to adopt obviously that's different but we can't choose our family we don't know what what quirks people have that will come out later that didn't come out before and uh and every family has its own amount of dysfunction and yet we still love our family and i think there's a there's a lesson in there for us on on god and god and his family because he did choose his family mm-hmm. he chose he chose us. He chose us. And he knew about our dysfunction. He knew all about our dysfunction forever, from all time. Right. And he still chose us. Yeah. Um, yeah, as we, as we go on, um, mm-hmm. you know, I, I noticed as we go on, um, in these stories um, and in the study, and spoiler alert, so... <laughs> okay. so but, Fair enough. But, but as, we, as we go on, we start to learn more about the dysfunction, and then it starts talking more about the broader God's family and God's children okay. versus brother to brother or, mm-hmm. or whatever and then the dysfunction that comes and in, 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 it's a wonderful proof of god's love and so yes, absolutely um, so yeah we see we see more of that as we as we get in so mm-hmm. it's it's great story of joseph is is um very illustrative of that it is and it's unique in the sense that uh i've, I've heard a statement or i can't repeat it exactly i don't remember exactly how it goes but it's something about the the victor writes the history right yep and, and that makes sense so I think what the, the meaning of that is, is the person who wins the victory gets to dictate um, how the history is written down, right? Yeah, they uh, control the narrative. They control the narrative, sure. Yep. And so typically when you're, when you're writing a narrative about your own history and uh, you are the one in control of that, you get to paint yourself in a pretty nice picture, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. sure, why not? <laughs> and yet the Bible records all manner of dysfunction Mm -hmm. incredible amounts of dysfunction just as we go through the story we're going to hear about some of this um in fact i'd like to read a little further because it talks about some of this uh right after the males in the town of shechem were killed Uh, the oldest brother reuben displayed dominance and defiance to his aging father by sleeping with bilhah rachel's maid um, and the mother of several of jacob's children meanwhile joseph's brother judah mistook his widowed daughter-in-law for a prostitute and ended up having twins with her. This this is kind of a messed up family. Yeah. yeah, (laughs) Okay. Uh, It's not just a whoops. (laughs) This is a pretty messed up family. Right. And 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 there's a question. I was just saying, it's pretty obvious that the the brothers live a bit in the wild, wild west, right? Yes, absolutely. They they see what they want. They take what they want. They do what they want. Who's going to stop? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and of course, uh, Jacob added fuel to this, this fire, all his family tension by his obvious favoritism towards Joseph in giving him this expensive, and that's, again, this was my favorite part when I was a kid because of the pictures, expensive <laughs> coat of many colors. Um, that was a, that was almost a sign of royalty. This would have been quite an extravagant gift, mm-hmm. uh, very extravagant gift. And so to, to say that, well, maybe Joseph wasn't the favorite. No, no, no. Everyone knew it, it was it was it was obvious. Yeah. Favorite son, absolutely favorite son, and then it asks this question, which really got me here: Why do you think that Abraham, 
Isaac, and Jacob are all listed as faith heroes in Hebrews 11 when you consider their messy family relationships. Uh, it made me think, what does faith have to do with um, being, well, being considered faithful and yet still coming from incredibly uh, messy and dysfunctional families, which apparently we all do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How can, how, how can the hell is that reconciled? Well, so honestly, this is, um, you know, I'll probably beat this dead horse. That's okay. Uh, plenty. This is, this is the beauty of God's love, right? Mm -hmm. And so we remain faithful, no matter how dysfunctional we are. Okay. We remain faithful in our, in our love for him and our, and our want to do for him and our, and our, and our acceptance of his gift and, and all of those things. Um, because we're all going to fall into dysfunction, right? Absolutely. Uh, we, yeah. we all have this dysfunction. The Lord will keep us in his family, and he still loves us, and he still wants to be with us. And and so to be faithful is to continue to try to do better. Continue, and so I think uh, to, to answer to answer God, and and, okay. and and he knows that we're going to face the, the dysfunction. We're going to face the... Um, the tribulation we're going to face the the bad times and yet as our father okay uh-huh still loves us let me ask you a question to to clarify something sure. you just said um you said we want to continue to try to do better mm -hmm. is that um it is kind of a leading question okay. but is that better in in our in our era our attitudes actions thoughts you know uh everything that makes up kind of who we are day to day or better in our relationship with christ yes Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, and, and, and again, so I think I think it's it's all of the, the real answer is all of the above, right? Okay. Um, because, Which comes first? Uh, so I think it has to be the relationship first, okay. right? Okay. All right. And, and the reason I say the relationship first is 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 we do all of those other things mm -hmm. um, because we love, uh, because okay. we love, because yes. we have faith, because, yeah. and and Absolutely. not and not right. only that, um, the the truth of the matter is we want to have that relationship with him. Mm -hmm. So now our actions and our words and our thoughts and and, and our being, if you will, mm -hmm. um, is a reflection of him that we get to share with everyone else. Mm -hmm. And so maybe maybe now our actions, our words, are in, inspire, increase improve okay. someone else's walk and, okay. and and helps bring them in because because if we're not sharing if we're not sharing the love if we're not sharing the the faith then what's, what's what, the what are we doing right. right right what's the point i know we've talked about this before the example of the dead sea always taking in clean fresh water and yet it's the dead sea for a reason right it doesn't share right it's the lowest point on earth so um okay okay great now this idea that, that we are we, we enter into a relationship with Christ, and then the actions, the words, attitudes, all of that spills out of that relationship, mm -hmm. and then and then still rectifying that with a uh, with with dysfunction, with failure and and mess ups and mistakes that we make. So remaining faithful, then it, in my mind, really speaks to the idea that uh, no matter how we mess up, uh, remaining faithful to the idea that we can always come back. To that relationship. Yep. No matter how many times we fall down, and, and sincerely mess up and sincerely repentant, come back to God and say, "I am. I'm sorry. I need to be in this relationship because I don't know any other way." And 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 uh, guess what God does? He does this. Welcome he home. opens his arms. Absolutely. And and, and and welcomes us back. Welcome back. Yeah. Um, so yeah, ab time. absolutely. Okay. Great. Great. So okay, that kind of answers that whole faith. You know. The, the faith champions, even in that, uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they all fall short, same as we do. Same as we do. They were people. We often think of the patriarchs, you know, the, the father of the faithful. And uh, it kind of sets that, that that's a, it feels like a pretty high stool to set someone up on a, a, a pedestal. Mm -hmm. They were people. I mean, they made some... They were humans too. They were humans and they made some pretty serious dysfunctional mistakes in their life. Right. And what you did just now, God says, welcome back. Welcome back. Every single time. Yeah. So so I, I, as far as that question about why were they mm -hmm. raised up as faith champions, I just want to real quick sure. visit the uh, Hebrews 11, 17 through 22. Okay. It right. gives a very direct, we jumped into the, the second level, the third level, uh, right? Okay, the application. Okay. Let's start Be at the beginning. Because then. Right, right. Because okay. it also talks about, so... Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God asked, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Despite the fact that he knew God had said that 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 was the doorway to his descendants, right? Mm -hmm. God had said, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. Right. And and then when God said, bring him as a sacrifice, yeah, kill him. he 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 still did, right? Because that's that's true faith in in in, in following God's commands. Um 
Okay, but faith knowing that God could still do what he said, regardless yeah. of what he was asking him to do. Right, right? so so 19, 19, oh, okay, okay. And, and chapter 11, sorry, 19. No, 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 no. Abraham assumed that if Isaac died, oh, God okay, would bring okay. him to life again. Okay, good, good. And, and so, so then, then it talks about Jacob and Esau, and um, it was by faith that Jacob, when he was old and dying, blessed mm. each of Joseph's son and bowed his worship as he leaned on his staff. It was by faith that Joseph, when he was about to die, Spoke, confidently spoke of God's bringing the people of Israel out of Egypt hmm. and commanded them to carry his bones out. So um, When they left. When they left. Not right. if they left. No, when they left. When they left. When they left. Okay. Um, so, so, you huh. know, these are three prime examples of hmm. of, of that faith champion, right? Mm -hmm. of, of, mm -hmm. uh, of that. And then, like I said, we jumped into the next layer of how does that apply to us? So, I, anyways, okay. I found these... It was it was obviously right a, a directed question and it takes you right sure. there and to see these three just clear examples was like oh wow they stand that's, out that's that's a that's a really beautiful picture they immediately stand out and and this in spite of the fact of their lives their choices their decisions their, right their failures right in spite of yeah I mean I mean they're there they have they, they were still bad faithful. bad family relationships yep. they yep. have. Uh, all, all kinds of dysfunction mm -hmm. uh, that just follows them everywhere, but still uh, they're counted as yeah. as faithful. Because they believed God could do what he said he would do. Yep. And I'll tell you, David, that right there um, gives me chills, makes my hair stand up. Just, you know, thinking of that because knowing uh, knowing what I do about my life, you know, and the mistakes I've made and, and the things that I do wrong, uh, sometimes on a daily basis, knowing that that it was just like these guys i can be counted mm -hmm. faithful just like they were uh, as people just like they yeah because knowing that god can do believing i'm sorry believing that god can do what he says he's going to do mm -hmm. which is transform me into his character <laughs> that's uh, even though i can't really see it right and, yeah. and that's i mean that's what that's the definition of faith right you can't sure, see it you sure. can't see it but you have you believe it so and you know it and, and, and you know it's going to happen yeah um, Man, that gives me that gives me strength for for daily living, um, because I know I'm going to mess up. Yeah, and perhaps that's the same for you. You know you're going to mess up, but here, you can still be faithful. You can you can still and, and, be and, and, and a what giant. You're, what you're talking about is a message of hope. Mm. Um, and so hopefully I don't derail us too much from the lesson. Derail, but, man, derail. But but. <clears throat> There are so many people, in my opinion, that, mm -hmm. that when they start studying and yeah. they, they feel restricted by or, or like, um, you know. Um, or maybe not even worthy. Not not worthy okay. and, and all of but those things. Restricted. Uh, explore that. For, and, for and of course, you know, of course, uh, we have we have the Ten Commandments and the things, oh, the okay. things that we're rules. supposed to do, rules and, okay. and stuff like that in, in that way. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and they feel... Um, you know, there's several places in the Bible where it talks about God's wrath and and things sure. like that. Yeah, and so anger. once once they start start reading into that, that they don't um, get the warm fuzzies of, mm -hmm. about the whole situation. And I've sure. seen plenty of people that have done that. Mm -hmm. But what what you've got to really look at is the in my opinion is the flip side of that, and it's what mm -hmm. you just talked about, which is really the message of hope, right? Mm -hmm. And the message of hope is that hey, God knows we're gonna mess up. I'm not saying it's okay. I'm not saying it's okay that you right. just go out and do whatever you want willy-nilly. Absolutely not. Paul said the same but, thing. But but he knows us and he yeah. loves us. Yes. And he knows he knows we're going to mess up before we mess up. And From guess what? Start to finish. He still loves us. Like that is such a hopeful message and you talk about strength for living daily. Like it absolutely has to be. Yeah. It, it that should be the bread that you nourish your soul on. You, you know what I mean? First wake up in the morning and is, say, I, I know I'm going to mess up today, but God loves me yep regardless absolutely huh. you know sometimes the stumbling block for me is uh is not so much that god loves me <laughs> it's that god also loves that idiot <laughs> in front of me who almost killed me the person at the intersection and the other person coming through the intersection mm -hmm. the same mm -hmm. as he loves me as i woke up this morning thinking god loves me thank god he loves me mm -hmm. he loves him too mm -hmm. or her you know <laughs> Yeah. And uh, sometimes that's a stumbling block, you know. It's not that I'm deliberately thinking, God doesn't love you, but I'm really angry because of their inattention to driving or whatever the case is. Yeah. And yet, still, the same exact love he has for me. And and in that, that specific scenario, okay. the, in spite of your thoughts about that person, mm -hmm. God still loves you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. My, 
my you know murderous thoughts or whatever. <laughs> you know, only. Yes. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. Still loves me and says, Isaac, that's not really in my character, and I'm gonna still work on you. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Every day. Yeah. Incredible, incredible stuff. Uh, yeah, hope for sure, David. I really appreciate you saying that. Hope for living. So uh, Monday, choosing a new direction. And I guess this goes to what we were saying a few minutes ago about maybe breaking, breaking the cycle, some of that cycle. Yeah. Um, and so it looks like this is where you, you said a minute ago, this is where, uh, we start to talk about how, um, God's love is for us instead of, it's not just a brother to brother. Yeah. Is, is that where it starts? Yeah. As, as, as we, as we get through here, mm -hmm. um, we start talking about, the 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 study shifts a little bit my opinion again okay. from from earthly family mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right and so there's dysfunction stuff like there to our heavenly family right okay. to to our to God the Father and 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 his relationship with us as his children and um and and a vision of of the arc of this story if you guys haven't read this please mm -hmm. please go back and read this is it's it's so fast so quick but so enlightening um but yeah this is where i think it trans it starts to transition more into a, not necessarily a direct about my brother my father my mother like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's more about now we get into the relationship with um we're evolving to that point where it's god the father okay all right you know it starts with uh it starts with with joseph Okay, so he's been sold as a slave, and uh, you know he's on his he's on his uh, permanent vacation now to Egypt. Mm -hmm. But can you imagine? Uh, he's a, he's a teenager, and he's never going to see his family again. Um, he is now a someone else's property. Mm -hmm. Gets to Egypt and literally becomes someone else's property. He is purchased at the market as a slave. Um, goes from being the favorite son, the the coat of many colors, the royalty within this family, the spoiled rotten brat. To uh, to a slave who doesn't even get paid for his labor mm -hmm. at, in, anymore. It has has uh, none of the luxuries. None of the luxuries of home at all. Yeah. I mean, he can't even understand the language. Mm -hmm. um, so completely foreign and and uh, I, I, I just, honestly, it's hard for me to imagine what's going through his mind. Oh yeah, uh, it 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 it, it would know, be. That must have been just a beat down of his soul. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. Well, it you know it's it's it's, it's interesting you say that because mm. um I, I know for me personally oh mm -hmm. yes it absolutely it would be it, i would be in a dark dark place yes. mentally yeah. um and, and 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 this has bits and pieces about him being in darker places it does it but does. but mm -hmm. surprisingly to me the the narrative is that he 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 changes his mindset right and mm. and he starts to now point himself to the lord right and go there and and uh and maybe I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but well, no, I don't. I don't think entirely. Uh, and and maybe maybe we won't work directly from from this lesson for here. But we are talking about the story of Joseph. So you know that when he's bought as uh, from Potiphar, mm -hmm. and he enters that household, so he begins to do his work in an excellent manner. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess he could have just said, you know, I'm a slave. It doesn't matter what I do. But that's not what he did. He began right. to work in an excellent manner. And I think, again, this is me theorizing. I think it's because he was raised a certain way. Yes, we talk about him being a spoiled, you know, the the, the favorite son, and and uh, maybe even showing some of that spoiled rottenness as he related his dreams to his father and older brothers. But he still had a foundation. Mm -hmm. He had a foundation, and and parents or or future parents, uh, you may think, sorry, you may think, um, and and even some parents. You may think, is anything I'm doing with my kids, is, is anything having a lasting effect? Because it sure doesn't seem like it. Right. I, I don't know if you've ever felt that way. If you're a parent, maybe you can chime in in the, in the comment section and say, yes, we understand what you mean. Um, sometimes it really feels like maybe there's no lasting effect, but I promise you, foundations are vitally important. Whether you can see the effect of the foundation right now or not, mm -hmm. they are vitally important. Mm -hmm. uh, I look to some of my own foundations that I was given. I didn't have the best childhood. But here I am, and some of those foundations, I still, I, I can see some of the effect of those foundations now, 45 years later. Uh, it just took a little okay. while for, it, me to, it just took, took a for me to see them, <laughs> yeah. Um, and I do believe that was, that was Joseph's case, too. I believe he was giving some, given some firm foundations that slowly began to come out as he found himself in this completely foreign environment. Yep. 
Um, so, uh, and you know, uh, Monday deals a lot with uh, some of the things that Joseph would have dealt with as this, as he as he kind of made this own his own personal decision to turn back to the God that he remembered from his childhood. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and then that was the foundation that he had to work with. Um, did it? Did, uh, oh, and I really like this last uh, this last sentence of the lesson here. Before we move to Tuesdays, I kind of highlighted. It said, "Remember." God has only children, no grandchildren. I thought, huh, <laughs> yeah, of course, but still, it's right. kind, of, kind of a cool thought. Yeah. Um, and it is, it, it becomes a very personal decision, just like Joseph made in his life, that he was going to look back at the foundation he was given, and he was going to follow God. That's a personal decision. I can't make that decision for you. Yep. I can't make it for my kids. I want that for my children. You want that for your children, I, I hope, I pray. But that's not something that we can we can we can't make that decision for them. Right. Uh, um, the the only thing we can do, hopefully, mm. right, is is be examples. Oh, absolutely. Expose absolutely. them, show them, show As, them, teach them, and mm -hmm. and um, uh, you know, I I know I fall short of that in many ways every day. I am fallible. Right. Yes. Dis, dis, dysfunctional family in that in that yes, sense, right? Of course. But uh -huh. but God still loves us, and He knows yeah. we're trying to do it. We're trying to do our uh, our, our absolute best. So. And it's kind of cool knowing knowing that that where we fall short, God can pick up the slack. Oh yeah. You know, and that's and, that's again that there's a little bit of hope in that. Oh, there's tons tons you of know, hope. because I fall short all the time with my kids, and uh, and knowing that He can pick up the slack. And maybe uh, transform where I have fallen short into a victory. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I really enjoyed uh, Tuesdays, finding true self worth. And let me let me um, position that as as a, as a versus thing. So so in today's society, <laughs> finding self worth self self worth uh, can be a very tricky thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think of uh, social media. Mm -hmm. Right, so I'm, and maybe I'm dating myself, but that that's all right. I think of Facebook because that's the social media that I kind of started when I was younger. You didn't say MySpace, so we're okay. Well, I remember MySpace. <laughs> I wanted nothing to do with it. Right. Um, but you know, finding self worth in in Facebook, you know, it it began, but just by you know catching up with friends, and and then you know you're scrolling mm -hmm. through the feed. Uh, you're uh, you're looking at, at how everyone else puts their best foot forward, and and you begin to think, you know, my life isn't that nice. Yeah. Wow. I I, I don't do half of these things that I see, and and there we start to measure ourselves against uh, a false uh, image or a false uh, standard. Mm -hmm. And man, that can really. Uh, I mean. Just how damaging could that be? Oh, it's you it's know? tough. It's very tough because yeah. because you're right. It is a false image, a, a false standard. Yeah. Because those people, you know, those are the same people, and I, and I, I hate that it's this way in the world. But those are the same people that aren't posting. Hey, here's the credit card bill I had to pay late because I had to wait for that extra paycheck. Okay. But they are right. posting. Hey, look at my new car. Look yes. at the vacation. Or yes. Look at the home run my kid hit. Yep. Right? Which is great. Your kid hit a home run or, sure. or did whatever. Absolutely. But they're not also posting. Yeah, but. Here's the F my kid got because he just didn't do his homework. He's right. smart, you know, or, mm -hmm. or, you know, here's the argument we had. Like, you know, and exactly. so it, it creates yeah. a false narrative. So that's yep. that's important, um, you know, to figure out, you know, finding our true self-worth. We can't, we have to, don't get me wrong, Facebook, those things are great for sure. keep, keeping connecting, but we can't use that as a measuring stick for ourselves. Okay, so I positioned it in such a way. I wanted to ask you then if, if, um, if nothing that society can offer us, whether it's social media, whether it's uh, influence, uh, power, money, um, position, title, any of the, if none of those things from that the society can offer us really can give us uh, an accurate standard to measure ourselves against, how in the world do we determine what we're worth? Um, I mean, what, what would you say to that? You know, if someone says, listen, how do I figure out whether I'm valuable or not if, if, uh, if nothing society has to offer is an accurate measurement. Well, so you have to, um, I think, break that down a little bit, but okay. I'll, I'll, I'll answer with this. How do you measure yeah. yourself? Yeah. There's an entire book that was written that tells us about our self-worth, hmm. and it tells the story of someone who sits on high okay, and sent his son down, himself, his, himself and his son. Himself, right. Okay, to sacrifice himself, mm -hmm. to sacrifice himself long before I was even a thought in, in the world, 
Now, when you say sacrifice, you mean literally die. He, he not only die. It's not. It's not like he's he's alive and he's dead. He was tortured, mm-hmm. right? And he knew this beforehand. He Before knew coming. He knew all of these things were going to happen, and he still did these things mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. If that doesn't tell you, you know, you know, we've 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 all read stories of of war heroes. Sure. Of, yeah. of, of of different people mm-hmm. who have um, sacrificed themselves to save two, three, four. Yep. I, I think of Desmond Doss, seventy-five. Seventy-five, mm-hmm. right? Um, uh, with uh, um, you know, without a gun, right? Sure, yeah, right, right. Yeah. But we're talking about someone who literally did this for all of existence ever. Billions. Billions. From the beginning of time. From the beginning of time to the end of time, huh. and knows. All their dysfunction. He knows all their good. He knows all their bad. He knows every he, single secret. Every single little piece. Huh. If that doesn't tell you how valuable you are, if that doesn't help you establish your worth, then we need to spend a little more time reading. You know, <laughs> like, and, and I don't mean that in a flippant way. I understand. I understand. You know, that, that that's that that's is a very serious statement. That that's right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, think about in your life. Yeah. How many humans here on this earth, mm-hmm. if they knew every little deep, dark, gory detail yeah. about the good, the bad, the ugly of everything in your life? I don't I, think I'd have any friends. Right. At all. And, and like I said, yeah. I, um, you know, I, I hope it's obvious, right? I don't portray <laughs> myself as some super pious, super perfect. Uh, we, but, we, we are not that. We are not that. <laughs> but, but I, you know, um, you know God, God gave all. Yeah, and he, and he does know all of that. And he Every know, last in, in spite of in spite of, of all lives. that, he yeah. still did it. So, now the rabbit trail, rabbit trail warning. Yeah. Uh, this really speaks to um, speaks to w- what's at stake in in this world. If uh, and I do believe that God is real, and I do believe that Satan is real. This the you know that Satan started life as Lucifer as mm-hmm. a covering cherub in heaven who stood the closest to God and was to shine God's light to the rest of the universe and became a deceiver, became Satan. Um, If Satan can convince humanity that humanity is just valueless, an accident, a cosmic starseed accident, he's won. Mm -hmm. He's won. Because what's the point of things? Right. Then, then all those standards that society has to offer, well, those become legitimate. That's the point. Uh, yeah. This life that we have right now, that's the point. Mm-hmm. And, um, <laughs> and that's so small compared to the true value that you just painted a picture of. The creator, the God of everything who created us and knew our every last bit of vileness in our hearts and loved us enough to still... All of humanity for all time, sacrifice himself. Yep. Um, not to mention that we're created in the image of God and mm-hmm. in His likeness, mm-hmm. and uh, and He sacrificed Himself for us. So it, it's real. It's it's like an uneven it, it, balance. It, it, uh, again, if that doesn't give you some form of hope, it, absolutely you know, in your chest, like it. Um, it's a, it's a fundamental shift on on how and and not to set up humanity as as saying. It, it doesn't lift humanity up. It lifts God up. Oh, yeah. It, you know, it lifts God so high that he found us that valuable that he sacrificed himself for us. Yeah. Um, that he, you know, so, yeah, it's not saying that humanity is is that special. We are only special because of the sacrifice that God made for 100%, us. 100%. Yes. Yeah, and 100%. It really lifts God high on that pedestal. And he deserves to be lifted. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. You know... I uh, I just I highlighted this last thing in uh, and put a big a big in in all caps amen after this statement. It says indeed, Joseph learns the lesson that we all have to learn. If we are dependent on others to tell us what we are worth, we'll be in for a rough ride, and we'll be horribly confused because not everyone is going to appreciate who we are or what we are like. Kind of like what you said, especially if someone knows our deepest, darkest, or every single action that we've had, every thought we've made. If yeah. Like, yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah. Um, instead, we need to find our self-worth in what God thinks of us, how God sees us, not in the roles that we currently have. Um, and I was thinking about that, how God sees us. This next 
thing, and, 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 and maybe we can talk about this for a minute, because I have a little bit of a, of a problem with one of the statements here. It said, God looks at us with glasses tinted with grace. 100% agree, because that's his, his nature. His mm -hmm. nature is grace and love and mercy mm -hmm. and justice. He sees a potential beauty and talent that we can't even imagine. Now, my question is with the word potential. Uh, God looks at humanity and sees the sacrifice that his son made, mm -hmm. right? Because Jesus died for all of humanity from the beginning of time until the end of time. Hands down, no questions asked. Right. It wasn't just for the ones who were going to accept him. No, he died for all of humanity. So when God looks at humanity, does he see potential? Or does he see uh, actual? And, and say, I don't think I understand what you're saying. No, 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 no. Uh, I, I, I think. And, okay, and, and maybe, right. um, I, the way I read this was more about... Um, he sees us as we actually are, 100%. He okay. knows us as we, uh, you know, um, Torn Wells, right? Fully Known. Okay. He has a song okay. called Fully Known, mm -hmm. and it's a beautiful song. And it's a, uh, it's one song that I think goes well with kind of what we're talking about I'm here. I'm not familiar with it. Uh, so he says, he says, I'm fully known, but loved by you, right? And so mm -hmm. it's, it's talking about God knows us fully, 100%, in and out, okay. and still loved. And it's a great song. Sorry. not. Um, well, I'm sorry. When this YouTube video is done, go look it up on YouTube. <laughs> okay. it's, it's great. Um, but, but I think what, what this is talking to is God knows, God sees... What we, as a society, as, as a humanity, could have been, right? He sees the full potential of what we could have been if we were perfect people, if we were, okay. if we, if, and, and he sees beauty and talent that we can't even imagine. These are all things we're going to fall short of, right? Sure, absolutely. And, and so what the, I think what this is saying is he sees all of these things that we could have been, and, and he knows we've fallen short, mm -hmm. but he was prepared to die for us so that we could have the opportunity to become all of those things that we were created to be. Not in this life, but in the next, hmm. right? And, and I think that's the next statement. So I think when we're talking about he sees okay. potential, I don't think he's seeing... Um, like, a, like a gamble. Like, yeah. well, you could be, so I'm going to go ahead and gamble. Right, Not that. no. Okay. I, th I, think, I think what he's seeing is, is seeing that, you know, on a scale of 1 to 100, mm -hmm. we're going to hit 80. Right, and we could have been a hundred, or we could be a hundred, and he knows that in in this life, in this humanity, mm -hmm. we're only going to be eighty, and he loves us enough. He loves us enough, or we're mm -hmm. going to be forty, or we're going to be thirty, or we're going right. to be anywhere on the spectrum. Sure. He loves us enough that he came and sacrificed himself, and said, "I'm doing this because I want to take you to the next life, and and I want to show you what you can be." That and hundred. Let's yes, and mm -hmm. and just how it may. Think of how amazing that's going to be when we get there. Hmm. Like, just think how awesome that's going to be. You know, I, I, uh, I'll, I'll refer back to that passage. And again, I, I need to memorize where it's found. Um, that eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor can we even imagine. It says, entered into the mind of man. We can't even imagine the things that God has prepared for us. So, yeah, when you say imagine what that will be like. Whatever I can imagine, better. Oh yeah, and, and that's and that's um, the, the 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 imagine all the love you can imagine. Imagine mm. anything. God's love is greater by by uh, honestly, and that's really an, hard to understand. An unimaginable amount. Yeah. It's it's greater. So that, and, it's that yeah, that's hard to understand. Yeah, it's to picture very, what, what what does that even mean? Right, you know what uh, is infinity? Right, yeah, okay. it's, it's, it's it's the sure, same. Sure, sure. Uh, it's, it's okay. You know what? That's, that's a good explanation. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, because that's, that stopped me right there when I saw potential. What does it mean by potential? So that's a good explanation. I think, I think, um, and, and I initially, the first time I read it through, I saw it and I, I, I was like, huh, does that lead to disappointment? Because I'm not that right. It's, it's, it's mm -hmm. a judging standard, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's, mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't think it's that. I think it's just God knows how amazing we can be and he, he he is he loves us so, so that he it. so that we so that we will be so he made a way for us to right be there okay all right yeah. all right which again lifts God's love oh, up it goes it, back it, to that it, it just it just keeps coming it just uh, keeps coming uh, okay wow um and and here it is here's here's it says a key question I do believe it is 
The key question is always the same. How do we respond to the reality of God's love as revealed in Jesus Christ? And maybe that's more of a personal question. Maybe you need to take some time to think about that. How do we respond to that? Um, I could say, how should we respond? You know, and, and we all have standards of what we think, how we should respond. I could say, how do I respond on a daily basis? Not as well as I would like to. Absolutely. Um, how should I respond? I have a picture of that, sure. In every stressful instance, in every uh, angering instance, I need to not respond in kind, you know, with, with stress or with anger. And uh, hmm. I, th- I think for me, the key What's answer that? here was was step one, right? Hmm. Is what is the response? The res- the response and 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 step one mm-hmm. is accepting, right? Is accepting that God loves us, and He uh, sent His Son. Okay. And we need we need to accept, believe, first. and and accept that Jesus is my Savior. He He yeah. came here for me. He came here for you. He came here for everyone watching this video. Everyone mm-hmm. not watching mm-hmm. this video. He came here for us all. And we have to accept and believe that, and allow that love into us. And right then, this is where we now. Because we have that love and because we want to share that love, mm-hmm. we grow mm-hmm. closer. That turns into actions and words that we share with other people and hopefully um, it spreads. But I think it starts, to me, that the answer there was... I like that. ...was, was we, we first have to accept. That's number one. You know, and that, that, that uh, meshes very well with our, again, our sense of uh, self-worth. So it, it really, it changes who we are mm-hmm. from the inside out. Yeah. If we are that valuable then uh, then we do begin to respond uh, with love. It changes, well, literally, yeah, it changes who we are yeah. uh, in our actions, in our words, our attitudes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, but but belief. We've got to, and, and you say, well, can it be that simple? Yep. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, 100%. Belief. Uh, 100%. Yeah. That's where, I want to say, that's where the magic happens. But it's not magic. It's not magic at all. It's simply God doing his thing where he changes us back into his image through our faith, our belief in the idea that he is doing exactly what he says he's doing. And he says it over and over and yeah. over and over through the Bible. Yeah. He says it over and over. And so we just have to believe, accept, um, and do our best to appreciate, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think, yeah, yes, exactly. And I think in that appreciation is is us allowing him to make those changes in our lives. I, I do believe that that's a demonstration of our appreciation, not not by force of will that I'm going to be a better person, but by uh, appreciating what he's doing in my life and allowing him to m- make me a better person. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. Um, hmm. There's a question, and maybe this is something to think about. Maybe we'll talk about it too. I don't know. There are many groups and individuals telling us to love ourselves as we are and accept ourselves uncritically why is this real okay this says why is this really self-deception is this really self-deception why is it important that our worth come from outside of ourselves from the one who made us and knows our true potential okay i think there's uh, i think we're dealing with two different things here Mm -hmm. um love ourselves as we are and accept ourselves uncritically um, so God loves us as we are. Yes. Okay. Does he want us to stay that way? Uh, like you, you talked about a little bit, this whole potential thing that maybe we hit 30, but he's got, right. Okay. Um, no, I mean, we, we all need to, in, in various ways, try to better ourselves. Right. And, 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 and me especially, right. Um, Try to better my relationship with God, right? And, and and I think what this... Go ahead. Can you still love yourself, though? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Okay, all right. Uh, I, I feel the same way, too. I well, mean, yeah. you've, you've got to learn to love yourself. That doesn't mean that I love everything about me. It doesn't, it doesn't mean... It, it just because I love myself doesn't mean that I live in the illusion that I'm perfect. Okay, Or that right. I'm exactly where I need to be or exactly right. how I need to okay. be. Okay, it's not... Uh, it's not that's not the end. Right. Okay. It, uh, yeah. It, and, 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 and honestly, because I love myself, mm-hmm. I'm 
I should try to improve myself or make myself better uh, okay, okay. or further my further my relationship with Jesus or make myself healthier or you know eat a salad every once in a while or you, you know all of these drink right. more water all of those sure, things sure. Um, you know um, <laughs> not not ride somebody ride somebody in traffic mm. you know all of those things um, so I think I think and, and what this points to is right um, groups and individuals and what we're talking about is I think a greater society saying hey whoever you are whatever you are you're exactly perfect as you are okay i think and, that's the key right and, there and and and, yeah. and so i think what what we need to do is understand you can't you shouldn't you shouldn't not love yourself right you shouldn't loathe yourself or hate yourself for right. anything and everything right right um but that doesn't mean that we should all just revel in exactly where we are and this is as good as it gets okay yes exactly okay and i think that's I think that's what they're getting at, but it may have been just been worded a little bit oddly there. Mm -hmm. um, loving myself is not necessarily being satisfied with myself. Hundred percent. Okay. I agree. Great. Good. 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 Um, and uh, I think I think that's that's where the question is: is this self deception? If 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 loving myself means being satisfied with who I am, then yes. Right. That's and, self deception. And, and the follow on here is is exactly what you spoke to earlier: is What's that? what is the measuring stick? Oh, what's the standard? Right. Okay. What's the what's the standard? Mm -hmm. Is it society standard that, yeah, just be happy with whoever you are and live your best life? I've heard yeah. that so many times. You know, living yeah. my best you life. You don't need to change. Right. Yeah. And okay. and it's and it's like it, it. Honestly, it doesn't matter who you are out there in the world. Mm -hmm. There is opportunity. There's chance. There's a way you can be better at any aspect and you everything. Should, mm -hmm. And 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 mm -hmm. um, all of us, our relationship with God, you know. First and foremost, we should try to be continuing to better that, to con to grow that, to mm -hmm. be in His Word and and share His love and bring other people. And, okay, um, all right. So you've hit on some key points there, and I want I want to dig in on those yeah. too because bettering that relationship sometimes that's a challenging concept for people. Like, well, how do I do that? I go to church every week, <laughs> but you hit on some things. You said uh, you said uh, be be in his word mm -hmm. okay so he's written this you talked about a letter a, a book that he's written for us specifically for us talking about his love uh, that we get to know who he is through this through this description of him um, if you got friends and, and you were to read a book about one of your friends you would learn a lot about that friend but one of the key things that you've got to do is you got to talk to your friend mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. and and they of course they talk back uh, that's one of the same things with with bettering our relationship with with God is we got to talk to him mm -hmm. We've got to talk to him uh, Constantly, you know, you might, might just say uh, well, I, I can't I, I gotta drive I gotta work I got things to think about and things to do. Of course we do. This is life. It's busy But I don't think that excludes or should exclude God from any aspect of our life Oh, absolutely not. In all of the things that we are busy with God can still be a part of those things. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the only way to build a better relationship with God as a friend, as a savior, as whoever he is to us. We've got to spend time in his word. Yep. We've absolutely. got to be allowing him to do things through us, to be showing his love to others. And we've got to be talking to him. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah. And and uh, we're we are 53 minutes in here. And we're going to go to... We're on Wednesday. Wednesday, yes. Um so this is this is called doing relationships God's way. That's the title here, uh, and I think really you've, you you kind of hit on that just a second ago when you talked about the things that we need to be doing um, in in others. Like how, how do we how do we interact with others in this relationship? Maybe, maybe if I could get you to expand on that just a little bit. Oh man, you're asking me to remember what I said five minutes ago. <laughs> that's, that's not very good. <laughs> Sorry, man. Uh, no, no, no. It, it's just it, it's just we we. It's my belief that we need to be an example okay. uh, of, of, of God's love. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that we're going to be perfect, right? Um, uh, no. I, I think, I think um, we, we, last time I was here, we talked about it in, uh, you know, if we were all perfect, if, if church was only for perfect people, the pews would be empty, right? Sure, absolutely. Um, and, and, mm -hmm. and so an understanding, not necessarily an acceptance, but an understanding that we're all going to fall short, but we still need to continue to, in every interaction, in every everything, uh, try to... Try to show Jesus love, and and that's going to help other people grow. It's going to help bring them to Jesus. It's going to help everything. And and you know, it might be a tiny pebble. And I know it sounds 
it, it sounds um, small, right? Mm -hmm. But if, if you can provide a tiny pebble of hope, a tiny pebble of God's love to somebody, mm -hmm. um, then maybe they're able to share that, right? And then we're talking about then this faith of a mustard seed, right? And we're, yeah. we're talking about a pebble. So, yep. so it, 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 when we're talking about ripples of, of family dysfunction, mm -hmm. we, what, we, what I hope this whole thing can help people shift to is instead of ripples of family dysfunction, mm -hmm. ripples of God's love, right? And, and then it becomes bringing this into our heart, yep. sharing it out into the world. See, I, and, and I can't imagine any scenario where me attempting to show love, God's love, to others around me would cause damage. Right. Would oh. cause harm. Would, yeah. cause, would cause any sort of pain. I can't really imagine a scenario in which that would be the case. If I'm attempting to show true, selfless, uh, uh, unconditional love mm -hmm. in all my various relationships. Yep. I can't, I can't picture how that would go wrong. Right. Um, so, yeah, true, true, man. So doing relationships God's ways is, uh, I think you've described that really to, to a T. Um, Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and go through that to, to Thursday before we get too uh, long-winded here. Um, so, still going here. This is called the Great Controversy, up close and personal. Now, you may have never heard that phrase, the Great Controversy. You wonder what in the world are you talking about? Uh, controversy is just another word for a battle or war or you know uh, entanglement that yeah doesn't end well. Uh, the Great Controversy is. Well, a way of worldview of looking at this huge battle between uh, good and evil, between mm -hmm. God and Satan. And Satan. Um, now, in, in some in some uh, some cultures, they see that as a as a perpetual conflict, a balance that that has to be there, and I I strongly disagree with that. That uh, evil does not have a a true reason for existing, and there to maintain balance, there does not need to be evil it's it's unnatural because it causes death death is not natural to the rest of the universe we may feel that it is here on this earth mm -hmm. we may feel that that's the perfect that's the normal thing for the way the universe to operate and yet according to scripture according to the bible it's not for the wages of sin this is it right here on this planet yep the only place that that happens mm -hmm. so um that's that's what I mean when we say the great controversy. We're talking about this huge war that's taking place, uh, and this earth is the battleground. And one day that controversy will be ended. But this is talking about the great controversy up close and personal. So this happens in our lives every single day. The relationships that you just talked about, um, how we interact with those people, the choices that we make. Well, that's that's part of the battle. Yep. In fact, I would say the choices that we make are the battle. Absolutely. In every single human mind, from the beginning of time to the end, the choices that we make, that's the great controversy. Absolutely. So every bit of it is up close and personal. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's, it's uh, you know, the battle, the battle for, for humanity. Mm -hmm. um, so, it, it, and, and, and really those battles are, you know, the, the, um, you know, little little battles every day, and mm -hmm. we all have them. So sure, it's, sure. it's it's about how do we how do we continue to uh, address them? Yeah, so. yeah. Okay. Um, hmm. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna read through just a couple of uh, a couple of the paragraphs here that I thought were especially poignant. Uh, you you know this yourself. Life on planet Earth isn't fair. If you have lived it all in the real world, you know life on Earth is not fair. Good is not always rewarded, and evil is not always immediately punished. There's some good news, though. Joseph could find rest even in prison because God was with him. Uh, that goes back to something you said a while back, David, in belief. Belief. Yep. Belief is the foundation. Mm -hmm. It's the first thing out of the gate. It's the first step we have to take. Belief. Joseph could have just as easily thought, well, God's not with me because I'm in prison. Right. But he didn't. But he didn't. He, kn no. he knew God was with him. He had to believe it. He had to believe it. Um, and again, sometimes I can't see it, but I'm going to believe it. I'm, uh, sometimes people say stepping out in faith. 
as though that's taking an action. And I believe sometimes that's the case, you know, to take an action is stepping out in faith. Man, I think just simply believing is stepping out in faith. Absolutely. Especially when everything around you says, no, that's not the way it is. Yeah. I, mean, I believe that it because is. Because a lot of times it's also a loss of control. Sure. Um, so sure. when you step out in faith or, or you, you do that, um, you know, here, here Joseph is... It, you know, he, his belief that God's going to, God's going to provide, God's going to take As care of As a prisoner, you pretty much don't have control of any aspect yeah, you, of your life. You, do, you don't, but, but, and, and he could have, so to get to this point, mm -hmm. uh, for those that, that may not know the story, um, oh. you know, his, his, sure. his master's wife accused him, mm -hmm. um, of, of attacking, of, of attacking yeah. him and he didn't even protest. He, he didn't do it. She, she for lack of a better term, attacked him, came mm -hmm. on to him. Mm -hmm. And um, he didn't protest because, you know, he knew it would be met with... He's just a slave. He's just a slave. Yeah. Um, and and so he got he gets thrown in prison mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And and he could have just easily, again, gone to a deep, dark place mentally sure. and, and woe is me. But he, he believed, he knew God was with him. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, this, this now starts talking about... What happens next? What what are the positive mm -hmm. things that happen, and what what turns? And his whole story turns mm -hmm. uh, to where you know he becomes the. So that belief then kind of changed the way he did things in prison, huh? hundred percent. Yeah, a hundred percent. And he began to be trusted and he, respected and to the point that he he ran the prison. Yeah. The the prison yeah. the prison guard. Can you can you imagine to, in today's society <laughs> the warden just handing over the keys I, to I one really of the prisoners? No. Yeah. <laughs> I really yeah. can't. Uh, because they're all innocent. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Yes. Um, you know, can you... <laughs> I, I picture Joseph saying, yeah, but I really am innocent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we all are, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so, and so in this, and this goes to... Um, one of the things it says here, it says in prison... So one of the things we've also... We kind of skipped over from uh, Wednesday. He mm -hmm. talks about the, uh, the baker and the cupbearer. Sure. Right? Yeah. So in prison, he meets the pharaoh's... Baker and Cupbearer, mm -hmm. they have these dreams. He interprets the dreams and he says, "Hey guys, I can. I'll tell you what this means. In three days, Cupbearer, you're going to be reinstated. Mm -hmm. uh, Baker, yeah, you're, you're going to you're going to lose your life. Yeah. Um, Cupbearer, please remember me. Like, tell look when you get out there and yeah. please remember me. And unfortunately, the Cupbearer didn't. Poor memory. But what what then it starts talking about is in prison. Joseph worked with the real, not the ideal. And yeah. I thought I thought, man, that's a powerful statement about about him mm -hmm. rather than sit back and man i could be sitting there in my beautiful coat yep. in my tent and you know my brothers are out working the field and dad's mm -hmm. okay with it and i'm just you know having a good old time instead mm -hmm. of working with that ideal that thought right. of his mind right. he said no this is the real this is the reality and i'm gonna do what god's calling me to do and i'm gonna make the best of it he networked he helped others he became, like I said, a prisoner who was the warden for the prison. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and then, not only that, he he says it, it says he was not above asking for help mm. and making himself vulnerable, right? So even in his in his high place, he mm -hmm. still said, "Hey, Cupbearer, remember me. Like yeah. tell tell the Pharaoh about me." Like, and uh, I think that's a part of what you were just talking about: working with the real versus the ideal. The ideal. Oh, good. You know, that cupbearer is going to tell the Pharaoh and he's, I'll be out within a week. Mm -hmm. You know, but that wasn't the real. That was just the ideal. Right. And when it didn't happen, he continued to still work with what he had mm -hmm. and continue. He didn't get bitter. He didn't just, again, go to that deep, dark place. Yep. Um, <clears throat> you know, this final sentence of that, um, because sure, Joseph, I'm sure suffered some depression from time to time. I'm sure he looked around and things were so dark, he had no way out, didn't know what was going to happen, and yet still believed. Um, it says this in the, in the lesson, his, meaning God's promise to give us wisdom, also extends to our relationships. And as he was with Joseph, he promises to be with us when our relationships prove complex. Now, how often has a relationship proved complex? Yeah. Let me, let me <laughs> Every count, single let me relationship in my life yeah, yeah. Is, is complex to it's, some degree or another. Right. 
And God says, hey, I'm going to be with you in those relationships. Yeah. And I'm going to give you wisdom in those relationships. Right. And, 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 this, and this, again, hmm. uh, hopefully clearly illustrates, and again, in this week's lesson, mm -hmm. the evolution from a, a worldly family, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Dysfunction. All the troubles. And, uh, yeah. The evolution of Joseph from that into now where he is a true... He always was, but uh, just a picture of a child of God mm -hmm. who who has a belief and is strong in that belief and convicted in that belief and shares with God and talks with God and and yeah. God God does uh, helps him see the positive things. Um, mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. it's uh, and, and he still navigates. And I'm, I know they're going to will probably well I don't know what next week's is, but uh, I'll maybe maybe spoiler alert I don't know. Um, <laughs> Joseph still is not perfect. No. Even through this evolution of him coming into closer relationship with God, beginning to see God as a vital aspect of every single day of his life with his relationships, with everything he does, still isn't perfect. Uh, we see him conduct this terrible experiment with his brothers to try to determine their uh, how they've changed, you know. Uh, right. So hor emotionally terrible experiment. Right. Um, you know, we see him do these things. And... Uh, and yet he remains steadfast in his relationship with God. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, again, again, it gives me hope. It really gives me hope because Joseph was a person like us dealing with complex relationships like us mm -hmm. every single day. And yet we still get to see the evolution of his relationship with God. Uh, did you have anything on Fridays that you wanted? It was a further thought. I don't know. No, if... I really didn't have, have much to talk about there. I think, I think we pretty well covered okay. uh, most of the points. I think the discussion questions are interesting, but I think no. that's, those are again, discussion questions. So they'll, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll open a can of worms that, um, <laughs> that we probably don't have time to discuss. We, we don't have time okay. to discuss fully. So, okay. um, no, I, th I think, like I said, it's, it, this week's lesson was uh, was about family dysfunction, and yeah. and uh, I think it's a clear illustration of breaking the cycle, mm -hmm. and then and then really the evolution of, um, and hopefully the realization for everyone that read it and mm -hmm. has come through this with us, that we're God's family, yeah. we're His children, and despite our dysfunction, mm -hmm. He He still loves us, ultimately, yeah, yeah, ultimately, and that will never end. And we really, we, we cannot be kicked out of his family just because of our dysfunction. It's just not going to happen. That's never going to disqualify us. Yeah. I mean, he made that decision before the foundation of the world. Before. So our dysfunction, regardless of how it looks to ourselves, to each other, is never going to disqualify us to be part of this family. And we really, I, I feel that that comes across in this lesson, but I really hope that, that uh, you've heard that come across in our discussion today as well yeah so uh, like i said I, I think i think this was a beautiful message of hope um mm -hmm. so so that being said uh, i think um you know that probably needs to be uh, hopefully you'll take that away um with you this week um that it can just feed you um and just and just brighten your day brighten your time um but i think pastor if you don't mind like i said if you don't mind including hope as part of the prayer, would you Absolutely. would you pray to kind of uh, close us sure, out? Sure, and... sure. Absolutely. Father in heaven, Lord, we sure thank you for this time that you have given Dave and I to come together and to study together to discuss um, this incredible story. Lord, to see truly that uh, all families have dysfunction. Uh, even even the families that are looked at as being heroes of faith have incredible dysfunction, Lord. We all come from families that look like that to one degree or another. And I thank you so much that this story you've given us offers us hope as we look to being a part of your family. Lord, we can all focus on our families. We could focus on our problems, on our issues. And yet that's not what you want us to focus on. You've called us to focus on being a part of your family because you know of our potential. You know who we can be when we unite ourselves with you. Lord, every day, help us to wake up and to set in our hearts this belief that you stand beside us, that you stand ready and willing to give us wisdom in our complex relationships, that you stand beside us willing to give us grace and mercy to others and the love that you pour into our hearts, help us to pour that out to those around us, Lord. Help us to focus on the relationship we have with you 
as part of your family, not just the dysfunctional relationships we have with each other on this earth. Lord, thank you for being our God. Thank you for giving us this time to study. And as you have opened up our, our minds, David and I's minds, Lord, to these truths and these, uh, this new lights, I ask that you would do the same for those that study with us on the video. Lord, thank you for being our God. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us. We're glad that you've chosen to study with us whenever you watch. And we pray that uh, may God bless you this coming week. And we hope hmm? to see you back again soon. I see what you did there. <laughs> Thanks. Bye, guys. <laughs>